Since the release of the Flux.1 dev model last August, the open source image generation model field seems to have entered a strange cycle. Model parameters are increasing, file sizes are growing, hardware requirements are getting higher, and generation speeds are slowing down. Recently, Alibaba's release of Z-Image Turbo has completely reversed this trend. As a small model with 6 billion parameters, it has low VRAM requirements and fast generation speed, reminiscent of the SDXL or even SD 1.5 era's responsive experience. Blazing speed does not compromise image quality. Nicknamed the image crafting model, it excels at portrait generation, especially ultra-realistic Asian faces, regardless of whether they are paired with modern or traditional clothing. No messed up hands, it handles various poses with ease. It easily solves scenarios that trouble SD3, like woman lying on the grass. It has also borrowed Kuen Images skills, with no issues generating text posters or e-commerce product photos. With comprehensive world knowledge, it recognizes many celebrities and landmarks. Just input a name and you get an image. At the same time, it natively supports Chinese input, so you never have to worry about not understanding English again. Compared to Flux 2, I find this model superior in most scenarios, especially suitable for newcomers. Everyone should try it out soon. Z-Image is released by Alibaba's Tongyi Mai team, and together with the previous Wan series and Kuen Image series, Alibaba feels like the most prominent name in open-source AIGC models lately. Comfy UI has bundled a BF16 format diffusion model, 12.3 gigabits. You need at least 12 gigabits of VRAM for smooth performance. T5B and Kijai have also produced FP8 format models. Kijai believes his version is slightly better. If you have a 40 series GPU or newer, use the E4M3FN format, otherwise, choose E5M2 for better compatibility. GGUF format is also a good option. Depending on your VRAM capacity, select the most cost effective version. Q4 or Q5 runs on entry level cards with 6 gigabits VRAM. This release uses QN X3 Vayers 4B as the text encoder, which is actually a large language model with 4 billion parameters, only one third less than the main model. It has strong comprehension abilities, so prompt writing is quite different from standard image generation models, we'll cover this in detail in the video. There's also an FP8 version for lower VRAM usage, with only minor differences from the original, so small VRAM users can use it with confidence. VAE can be directly reused from Flux VAE, or you can use the officially provided, smaller version, performance is similar. On your local setup, download the model, text encoder, and VAE versions best suited to your VRAM and place them in the corresponding folders. Launch Comfy UI. I am using 590 in this video. The latest Comfy UI stable version is 0.3.75, which already supports all Z Image Turbo image generation functions. However, this version does not include certain optimizations, such as Control Net for Z Image not yet being adapted. You can switch to the latest, nightly version in the manager, click to upgrade, and after updating, restart and refresh your browser. You can directly drag in the workflow I shared, but let's first review the default template provided by Comfy UI. Click the sidebar's workflow template library, the first entry on the homepage is it. Click to load. A typical text-to-image workflow generally includes model loading, setting image resolution, editing prompt, sampling, decoding, and saving the output. This time we're using the official BF16 model and the QN3 text encoder. As long as you have at least 12 gigabits VRAM, there's no need to use quantized models. For VAE, use Flux VAE. For clip type, select Lumina 2. I've introduced this image generation model before. Like Z Image Turbo, it uses a large language model as text encoder and can accept system instructions to act as different roles, such as painter, photographer, or child, to generate different styles. However, the QN3 used by Z Image Turbo has 4 billion parameters, much stronger than the 2 billion in Gemma 2, so prompts aren't tied to a rigid format and are much more flexible. That's why the default workflow's prompts are extremely simple, almost like normal direct text to image prompts. Other parameter settings will be explained in detail soon, let's run the workflow now. The first run loads models and takes extra time, but the key sampling stage only took 6.2 seconds, producing a portrait of a Latina woman by the riverside, just like a casual phone snapshot, extremely realistic. Next, let's examine how different parameter choices affect the workflow. The previous prompt was too simple, so let's try a more detailed one to test the model's adherence to complex prompts. 
Directly running this, the sampling finished in just 3.3 seconds, truly blazing speed. Let's zoom in and compare the result with a prompt. The composition and viewpoint match expectations, lighting and atmosphere are accurate, details such as the school of fish, reflections on the water, and bubbles in the foreground are well rendered. But there's some room for criticism, the prompt asked for bright orange neon tetra, which is a kind of tropical fish, yet the result shows orange goldfish, the color matches, but the species does not. Overall, prompt adherence scores a solid 8 or 9 out of 10. In the latter half of the video, we'll discuss prompt writing strategies and demonstrate some use cases where the model excels. As a distilled model, Z-Image Turbo has a significant drawback. Results generated with different seeds tend to be very similar. Our current workflow uses random seed. Let's generate four images consecutively. Only took less than 15 seconds, and all finished images are highly similar. So how do you repeatedly draw cards for more variety? A simple solution is to switch the scheduler to Dimmy Uniform, but it cannot be used with the Res Multi-Step Sampler, try Euler instead. Using this combination generates four noticeably different images. Z-Image Turbo supports various sampler and scheduler combinations, but only Dimmy Uniform offers the mentioned special functionality. The others provide limited differences. I've tested different samplers, the common Euler, the default Res Multi-Step, as well as DPMP2M SDE and grading estimation. Scheduler options include simple, normal, SGM uniform, and bong tangent added by a plugin. Although they produce subtle stylistic differences, there's no clear advantage in speed or quality if you're focusing on a specific style, try multiple runs and compare. Sampling steps defy intuition, more isn't always better. Both official documentation and comfy UI default to nine steps. 10 or 11 steps may yield a slight quality gain, but increasing steps further often leads to detail collapse and artifacts. Keep shift at the default 3. It works for most scenarios. If output images have noisy effects, you can slightly increase it, which helps repair some noise and local anomalies. There's no strict input resolution limit, but resolutions below 1536 by 1536 are recommended. The official documentation lists a node for generating various common resolutions. This doesn't mean you're restricted to those sizes. If you want to generate a 1920 by 1080, which is 16.9, note that in the latent space node, 1080 isn't divisible by 16, so you'll need to set it to an added 88. The output result is fine. The image is wider than previous square outputs, so the fish tank also appears wider, but the people, fish, and water details remain intact. However, if you try generating something huge like 372 by 3722, you'll exceed the model's capability. In such cases, the main subject will cluster in the upper left corner, while the rest of the image suffers detail collapse, repetition, and artifact seams. The model tolerates unusual aspect ratios to a degree. For instance, here's an extreme 8-1 wide image at 2048 by 256. The output looks much better than the huge square image. The entire composition appears normal. I suggest keeping CFG at 1. Some non-standard community schemes suggest setting it to 0.5 or 0.7 to improve image clarity or sharpness, or to 1.52 for anime or artistic styles. Personally, I don't think these tweaks are necessary. It's better to wait for the Z image base model release. Curious users can search for more info if they wish. We've covered the basic parameters, so now let's discuss the most crucial part of using the Z-Image Turbo model, positive prompts. To begin with, negative prompts are completely excluded. This model does not use negative prompts at all. The best results are achieved with long and detailed positive prompts, which greatly reduce the risk of blurry images. The official documentation recommends prompt augmentation to go beyond surface-level description and deeply leverage world knowledge. In practice, this means using system instructions to query a large language model. Here's the specific instruction. The wording is quite humorous. Despite poetic aspirations, the LLM is compelled to generate concise, literal prompts. Any vagueness or metaphor makes it uncomfortable. Essentially, the key is to be as explicit and detailed as possible when describing the subject, composition, lighting, atmosphere, materials, details, and color tone. If you do this, the resulting images are reliably good. Let's look at the prompt I used in the demonstration. Notice how detailed it is. If we only give the model a short prompt, 
such as a young lady, the model will fill in the gaps with its own ideas. The resulting image tends to have plain composition, lacks details, has flat lighting, and ordinary depth of field. But writing a good descriptive prompt can be challenging. For this, it's best to use the official system prompt template with a large language model, QWEN is recommended, or leverage the prompt generator in Minodes. If you want to handwrite prompts, you can use a fill-in-the-blank method, write out basic prompt, details, makeup, styling, background, atmosphere, rendering, etc. in separate lines. This approach can yield much more compelling images. Z Image Turbo natively supports Chinese language prompts. I switched my earlier demo prompt to Chinese, and the final image quality was virtually the same. You can confidently set aside your English dictionary. Because the model is capable of interpreting and following complex prompts, you can experiment with plenty of creative ideas. Let's see how the model performs across different scenarios. The model excels at producing natural portraits. By providing a detailed prompt specifying the subject's pose, perspective, clothing, scene, details, and lighting, you can easily generate natural, everyday images that look convincingly photographic. With different prompts, you'll get diverse character images, all free from any AI look. The model is also highly competent at generating apparel details. Aside from regular clothing, it can accurately pre-produce historical costumes and even imaginative outfits from fantasy scenes. Through training, the model has absorbed a vast amount of world knowledge and can recognize many celebrities, providing only a name will generate the corresponding image. It's also adept at landmark architecture. For example, tourist photos taken on the Great Wall look very natural. The model can render a variety of hand gestures. I've tried a range of heart and control gestures. The hands are depicted accurately. Though its text rendering isn't as advanced as Kuwen image, it can still handle tasks like adding labels or generating posters without issue. If you specify collage in the prompt, the model can generate multi-panel continuous images. However, stability is moderate. It sometimes takes a few runs to get the desired result. Get creative. You can generate all sorts of imaginative images, such as porcelain textured mecha, yarn-like dragon-headed octopuses, or giant mushrooms functioning as pavilions. Since there is no built-in moderation mechanism, the model can also produce borderline or NSFW content, but we won't cover those here. Some people have asked if it can be used for e-commerce product photography. The model can definitely generate product images, but until the edit model is released, it's difficult to ensure product consistency with image generation alone. I'd recommend waiting for now. There are some shortcomings. For example, getting the model to generate a bidding lip action is nearly impossible. It strongly favors professional photography style and doesn't perform as well with anime or artistic styles, and it doesn't understand niche anime characters well. However, for a high-speed distilled model, its capabilities are already impressive. Although Z-Image Turbo can directly output 2K images very quickly, in many scenarios, you may still want a more controllable upscaling workflow. The simplest solution is to combine an image upscaling model with low denoising resampling in Comfy UI. Within the basic text-to-image workflow, supply your prompt and run to generate an initial image. Since the output is just 24 by demo line 24, zooming into the face will reveal some blurring. Let's try upscaling. First, add an upscale image using model node and load an upscaling model. For this demonstration, I use the 4X UltraSharp model, which excels at reconstructing crisp detail and is broadly applicable. You can choose other models suited to your needs, such as Face Up Sharp for facial upscaling. Connect the generated image to the upscaling node. The fourfold output will be 496 by 4A96. I then use the area algorithm to scale down by half, resulting in a two-fold upscaling. This approach can result in images that are somewhat overly sharp. To make the image look more natural, duplicate the sampling node and perform another resampling with low denoising such as 0.2. Finally, add a comparison image node, organize your workflow, and click Run. The results are clear. Facial detail is noticeably increased, with a significant reduction in blurriness. If you don't want to use image upscaling models, you can use latent upscaling instead. Unlike downscaling with the area algorithm, 
When upscaling, I recommend bicupic with a two-fold scale. Latent upscaling requires a denoising value above 0.5. The higher the value, the more changes to the original image. I typically use 0.55 to preserve the original subject while adding details. Comparing the results, latent upscaling is effective but introduces more noticeable changes to the original image. In fact, for Z-Image Turbo outputs, Seed VR2 often delivers more realistic and richly detailed upscaling, but that's a separate workflow and won't be demonstrated here. Another team at Alibaba PAI previously developed the Wan Fun model series. This time, they released a control net model compatible with Z Image Turbo. It supports various control conditions, lines, depth, pose, and more. Let's test it out. First, ensure you are using Comfy UI version 0.3.77 or above, or the nightly build including the December 3rd update. The control net model is a single 3.1 gigabyte file. Place it in the models model patches folder. In the basic text image workflow, add a model patch loader node and load the model. Then, use the diff synth control net node to apply the patch to the main model. Though the node name mentions Q1 image, it works equally well for Z image turbo, just as the empty latent image node's name refers to SD3. Among the control net conditions, I find pose and depth most practical. Here, I'll demonstrate using pose. Upload an image and select the Open Pose preprocessor. Set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Provide the resulting pose map to ControlNet. The official recommendation is to set the control strength between 0.65 and 0.8, but in testing, I found low strength yields poor control. I usually start at 1 and fine-tune it based on the result. Modify your prompt to specify a different outdoor setting than the reference image. Click Run. The generated image follows the pose of the reference image exactly. I've also tested line art and depth conditions. The model works reasonably well, although stability could be improved. Sometimes it doesn't perform as expected. Once the Z image base model is released, I'm sure there will be a more robust, updated control net. As a distilled model, Z image turbo is not very strong at inpainting. Let me demonstrate. Load an image of a woman leaning against a railing holding a champagne glass and encode it into a latent image using the VAA node designed for inpainting. Right-click the image to open the mask editor, paint over the top left portion to designate it as the inpainting area, and save. Add cheers to the prompt and run. The new text appears in the edited area, it's missing a letter, but more importantly, the integration with the original image is poor and looks very unnatural. I generated four variants using different random seeds. All had unsatisfactory results. It's better to wait for the edit model for improved inpainting. Because Z-Image Turbo is lightweight and has low hardware requirements for training LoRa, many users have shown interest and asked me related questions. However, I feel that training on a distilled model is always somewhat limited, so I recommend waiting for the base model release before starting training. You can still apply it to the Turbo model afterward. If you really can't wait, you can use the AI Toolkit, which provides a D-Turbo training solution. Personally, I'll wait until the base or edit model is released before training, and I may update the tutorial then. Currently, there are already quite a few LoRa models available on Hugging Face, Modelscope, and C-Station. I'll pick one and demonstrate the workflow for everyone. Within the text-to-image workflow, create a new LoRa model loading node. I chose a Red Note style girl, Laura, using the author provided prompt which contains the trigger words and changed the image size to a vertical format of 1024 by 1536. Click Run to get the output. Compared to results generated with the same prompt but without Laura, the overall image is brighter. With stronger contrast, local highlights, smoother skin textures, and more vivid eye catching expressions. That concludes the demonstration section. By now, you should be clear about this model's features. Fast speed, high image quality, low entry barriers, good understanding of complex prompts, and exceptional portrait generation performance. With relatively few parameters, this model is suitable for most scenarios and is especially recommended as a first choice model for users new to AIGC. Alright, that's it for today's video. 
The models, plugins, and workflows mentioned are all linked in the description below. Feel free to get them if you need. See you next time.